Hi guys, my name is Maria Shandorova. I'm responsible for product development at Infinity and you are watching the Technical Tuesday video. In the last release of Infinity Forms, the write-back extension for ClickSense, Infinity Forms 8.0, we have enabled the server-side extension capabilities within the write-back. In this video, I will show you two new different functions you can use in your click script forms write and forms read table. As you can see, I have a newly created application here on my screen. So what we need is to create some table for a data model. Let's create inline table. with a key, with values key1, key2, key3. Let's create infinity forms object on the sheet that will contain this new field key as a dimension. Forms general is this table structure editable extension and yeah, key is the new dimension. In my forms admin application, I have created new form instance ID that's called SSC test backend. If you want to use the server side extension function in the script, you need to be sure that this data storage is created. When you add a new definition here in Forms Admin application, you need to uh, click on the Save button, Update Forms Settings, but the XML file is not yet created on the server automatically. It's created after it's first used in any application. Now on my server, I have SSC test backend XML file. Yeah, it's here. I have tried it before. <laughs> That's the reason for this uh, time difference. And uh, once we have this data storage ready to be used, we can pre-fill some data in it directly from the load script. What we will do is to call the following script function. Forms write is the newly added function if you enable server side extension in Infinity Forms during your installation. This function has only one input parameter, and that's the name of the table. So it's only up to you how it will be called. What's important is the structure of this table. Let's create it as inline table right now. And the structure is form instance ID. Again, field names are completely irrelevant. It will work with uh, any names you will use. The second field is the key value, then column name, and the final value. So the form instance ID I want to prefill is this one. Let's say I will have key one, key two, and key three. Column will be column. And any value. And value three. Let's try it. Let's check my backend XML file. Voila. So as you can see, the main logic is very simple and it's only up to your creativity how you will use it together with click functions and features. Because as you know, you don't need to create inline table in the script. You can use different other tables, calculations, data from infinity forms object or anything else you want. Let's do something more usable. <laughs> so 
Since the form instance ID in this case will always be the same, I can do the auto-generated load. And now I can join these key values from already existing table to save some time and make the solution easy to maintain. And what I can do right now is to create new fields for four upcoming quarters with some default value as my plan. What I need is column names for these quarters. And there's one small tip from me <laughs> to use the subfield function. If you use the subfield function without the third parameter, it will create four new rows with Q1, Q2, 3, and 4 as value of the single column, in my case called column. Let's try it this way. And that's a good error because I did a mistake here. What I need is to create this default values table. So I should join this to the default values table. Let's try it again. And it works. In my XML file, I now have new rows. As always, when you use XML file as a data storage with infinity forms, the full change log is created. No data is replaced. New columns are created. As an administrator right now, I can simply delete this previous data. And when we now open the sheet, we can use this simple form as my very simple first budgeting extension in the QuickSense. Dimension is already here. Form instance is the one I want to use. And I will just add these editable fields that already are in the XML file. Therefore, the pre-field values are shown to the user. If I want, I can change the field type to a currency. And also do any modifications, the pattern, but that's not a topic of this video. So I will just let it how it is right now. When a user do any changes, and click the Save button, new data is stored into XML file. Since we used the Save button, the reload of the application is not triggered, only the data is stored into XML file. But whenever this application will reload again, my default values will be stored to an XML file. And naturally, the user will have lost his or her modification. And that's exactly the big place for your creativity and click functions and features. Because I can, for example, create a new variable here. and manage whether I want to pre-fill the data or not.
The one more thing I need to do is to use this variable we prefill in my script and manage whether this part of the script should be done or not. If I want to trigger the reload of the application right from the app, I can allow recalculate button in the infinity forms object. In appearance section, reload settings, I can allow this recalculate button and that triggers reload of the app. And that's exactly what I wanted. One completely different use case or the set of use cases is when you want to use data from Infinity Forms data storage in a data model, or you just want to use it to pre-fill different data storage. In both cases, you need to load data from a data storage in your click script. Right now, if you use the XML file, you can use the subroutine that's provided in the documentation for loading data from XML file. And if you use a database as a data storage, naturally you can use one of click native connectors. There is also a big improvement in this, and that's the newly added function in the script that's based on the server set extension logic and can be used for loading data from any type of data storage you use. The main logic, how it's used in the script is the same. So the function looks like this but instead of forms write it's forms read table the reason why there is this uh, table in this function name is that forms read function is already the one that's used in the expression this function has only one input parameter too and that's name of the table what we need is to prepare the structure of this table so the data from data storage can be loaded from the right data storage and in the proper way. Yes, this needs to be done afterward. So uh, this is how it should be. And uh, let's create a new table. The structure is form instance, dimension key, and column name. Let's read data from this data storage I already have. So the form instance will be SSC test backend. Dimension can be a key one, two, three, or I can use this sign to load all the data instead. And the list of column name is needed, so let's start with just key one. When I open a data model, I can see that based on this definition, this new table has been created. How to improve it is that I can simply let's join the result of this function to already existing grid data table. Let's improve it a bit more. As you may notice in my data model, I have had this form instance two times, as well as the column name. And the reason is that the name of the fields created automatically are a bit different, and I want to use this join logic here. Therefore, I will rename form instance into form instance ID, and with column name, I'm going to use the same logic with the subfield as a few minutes ago.
and rename it to column name. If you specify values of dimension, you can also use dimension key as a label of the column if you want to use this left join logic. A big advantage I see in this approach in comparison with loading data by using subroutines in case of XML files and click native connectors in case of databases is that, as you may notice, you don't need to specify anywhere in this script what's the type of a data storage. You just say, I want to use this form instance ID and the information, whether it's XML file or database, what's the username, password, uh, and everything else, is already stored in forms admin application. You don't need to have this data here defined duplicitly. Therefore, if you switch from XML file in a development phase of your project into database because you are going to production with the solution, you don't need to do any changes in this script because the form instance ID will remain the same. Another big advantage of this approach is that you don't necessarily need to use only one form instance ID in this definition table. You can load data from different data storages in one call from the script. Combining data from different data storages is one of a really strong aspect of QuickSense itself. So we decided to follow it and give you this opportunity inside the Infinity Forms as well. I see so many use cases in this server-side extension capabilities and opportunities how to develop efficient scripts with so many functions and features and possibilities for users in the end that I really hope that you find this video inspirational and you can see at least some of them too. Next Tech Tuesday video will be here in 2021. So until then, Merry Christmas and enjoy forms, guys.